Good afternoon and welcome. This webinar is a collaboration between the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs, VA Center for Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships, CFBMP, and the Veterans Health Administration, VHA, Geriatrics and Extended Care Office. My name is True Lester Pauling. I will be your moderator this afternoon. Everyone's phone has been muted. If you have a question during the presentation today, please type it in the Q&A box on the right of the screen. I will read the questions at the end of the presentation and the presenter will provide a response. The presentation will be sent to everyone that registered and joined this webinar today. This is a live recording. I would like to thank Ms. Dana Cooper for this collaboration. We are grateful for your time today. But before we get started, I would like to introduce Mr. Conrad Washington, Director of the VA Center for Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships. Mr. Washington retired from the United States Marine Corps with 20 years of active duty service with a combat tour in 2004 in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom II. Mr. Washington is a licensed minister actively serving in his faith. He received his bachelor's degree of divinity and pastoral studies from Moody Theological Seminary. He also holds a MA in business management and a bachelor of science degree in education. Additionally, he is a graduate of VA's class of 2017 virtual expiring leaders program. Mr. Washington. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate it. Good afternoon and good morning to you, depending on where you are. Thank you all for joining us today. I appreciate it that you're taking time to uh, stop by the VA Center for Faith-Based Neighborhood Partnerships. And I want to thank Director Dana Cooper for taking time again. Uh, we appreciate you, ma'am, for uh, stopping by and sharing with your subject matter expert uh, information today. I want to share a few thoughts as we get ready for a federal holiday tomorrow. Uh, we know it as June uh, 19th, right? Uh, we remember and reflect Juneteenth. Uh, in commemoration of the day when all slaves in America were finally freed and ended. We celebrate that time over 156 years ago when the black slaves in Galveston, Texas were finally able to live free. Uh, we know that black Americans have helped define our nation and drive its progress uh, despite having to fight for basic rights guaranteed to all Americans. Uh, so let us uh, take time tomorrow to reflect and commemorate uh, that uh, historic occasion in our history. And again, I hope that you all will enjoy uh, this presentation and we look forward to you joining us again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Washington. At this time, I would like to introduce Ms. Dana Cooper. Please read her entire bio on the screen. Ms. Cooper serves as the Director of VA Home and Community Care in the VHA Office of Geriatrics and Extended Care. In this role, she has national responsibility for policy, operations and management of VA spectrum of home and community-based care services, providing care to our nation's veterans with complex chronic disability diseases. She has over 30 years of experience as a registered nurse in VA. Ms. Cooper holds a Master of Science degree in nursing with focus on gerontology. Excuse me if I didn't pronounce that right, Ms. Cooper. At this point, I give you our speaker for today, Ms. Dana Cooper. All right, get myself off mute. Thank you, True, for that wonderful introduction. And I really appreciate everyone being here today. We're going to start our presentation. Um, I was asked to talk today about VA's uh, geriatrics and extended care programs, um, providing care to all veterans. Although our name says geriatrics, which tends to mean older adults, we, in our office, our program uh, specific uh, programs are all for all veterans of all ages. So I want to just make that uh, point very clear. We do serve veterans um, throughout their lifespan. Let's go on to the next slide, please. So I want to start off um, by giving you a little bit of the demographic trends uh, within VA in regards to older adults. Significantly, um, our projections over the next 20 years uh, um, show that there are going to be an increase of women veterans over the age of 65 by about 128%. All aged veterans over the age of 85 are also going to increase, as well as women veterans over the age of 85. And why is this significant? 
Um, well, in the VA, our overall total veteran population is going to remain fairly stable, but these subsets of older adults are veterans who we're very concerned about as they age. Women and, and uh, those over the age of 65 um, or over the age of 85, both genders, have significantly higher dependencies on activities of daily living meaning they need someone to assist them with their care. Um, they also have significantly higher needs for long-term care placement, uh, particularly in nursing homes, um, as well as home care needs. Again, people to assist them to remain independent. So we're gonna go to the next slide and talk a little bit about what VA is doing to address this aging population. What we do know is that veterans and caregivers um, really want to remain in their home and as independent as possible for as long as they can. Home and community-based services um, is a uh, something our office is, is looking to expand significantly in order to be able to provide services in the home to those veterans uh, who need it and again, to keep them out of an institutional setting as long as possible. There is also financial impact to our agency in doing so. What we do know is that nursing home care is very expensive. Um, providing um, care in the home is less expensive. So if we can keep someone where they want to be, as well as have a financial impact, that is the goal of our office, is to provide services, again, to veterans of all ages, particularly for those over the age of 65 who are in need of services. Go to the next, please. So this is a slide that shows uh, the spectrum of services that we offer in our office, which is the office, as I mentioned, geriatrics and extended care. We do provide care for those that are independent all the way through their end of life and, and adjust those services um, both in amount of service and intensity of services as uh, the need uh, grows. We'll start off. Um, I'll start off by talking about our independent uh, practices, those in the ambulatory setting or outpatient setting. We have Jerry primary care clinics. We have problem focused clinics as well as outpatient palliative care. Those are those are for those who are nearing their end of life, but are not in their final years and. Um, these services are designed to do detailed. Uh, assessments and address needs and develop care plans accordingly. Our next fairly uh, independent setting is in the inpatient uh, uh, acute care hospitals. We provide palliative care units, again, for those that are having a need for symptom management or uh, something along those lines dealing um, with a chronic condition. Um, we also provide consults for that population, as well as geriatric focused consults, again, being an in depth, comprehensive assessments and care planning. That we work with the primary uh, providers to be able to deliver. 1 of our largest sections is, uh, is the section, uh, which I oversee, which is our home and community based long term services and supports. These services are provided in both. Uh, by both VA personnel, as well as purchased with our partners in the community. Community agencies provide personal care services, primarily homemaker home health aid, community adult daycare, and respite care. Our VA provided services are adult day health care programs, which can also be purchased in the community. But home-based primary care, our medical foster home, our skilled care and palliative care, as well as our veteran directed uh, care program. Veteran directed care is a program where veterans uh, receive a, a set budget and can plan their services and supports that they need in their home, including hiring their own family members or friends to be able to provide that care. 
Um, adult day health care, as I mentioned, can be provided in uh, the home setting as well as uh, purchased in the community. So wherever is closest for that veteran to attend. Um, that program in the inside VA is not uh, offered by every VA, um, but the service is offered um, in the community where it is not uh, provided by the VA. Home-based primary care is a program that is an interdisciplinary a team approach to managing veterans with complex uh, chronic diseases who find it difficult to get into the clinic for whatever reason that might be, whether it's health or uh, any psychosocial issues they may have that prevent them from coming in and having effective clinic visits. Home-based primary care is a physician-led program. It has nurses. Uh, social workers, dietitians, rehabilitation therapists, mental pr health providers, and pharmacists, all who go to the home to provide comprehensive care to the veteran in their home. Our Homemaker Home Health Aid uh, program is a personal care service program that offers veterans the care in their home to be able to uh, bathe them, dress them, and take care of their personal care needs. Our community residential and medical foster home program is a partnership with community providers, either uh, small family homes or smaller ALFs, um, where we case manage the veterans that are in those uh, settings. Currently, those uh, cost for that care is, is provided by the veteran. Um, so moving on next to our facility-based care programs, VA offers three different settings um, where we uh, can provide uh, institutional nursing home care. Um, so we offer our community living centers. Those, those are uh, nursing homes or facilities that are um, at VA medical centers uh, and staffed by VA employees. We also partner with over um, 1,200 community nursing homes in the community. Uh, these partners are, uh, are, are nursing homes which allow veterans to receive the care closest to their home. Um, and, uh, and then VA employees oversee that care through on-site visits and oversight. Our state veterans homes are homes in which are owned and operated by the state um, of which they are located, and uh, they are state employees. Uh, these these uh, homes, uh, VA does provide some per, per diem and, uh, and assist in the cost of care for veterans in those homes. So hospice care, hospice care is uh, care in the community. Um, that is provided by one of our many, many partners um, uh, that we purchase care through. And all of the uh, hospice agencies in which we do care um, are members of what our hospice coalition um, and partake in education in order to best meet the, the needs of our veteran population as they near the end of their life. Inpatient hospice can be provided also by VA staff in our community living centers or specific hospice units that have been uh, developed at any of the VA hospitals. Um, I see a question um, in the chat right now to describe the veteran directed care program. So veteran directed care is a, a program that veterans may elect uh, to receive their care through um, uh, family members or friends or um, someone of that um, caliber, people they know, or they can hire their own workers, um, however they choose. Um, VA does oversee that care to make sure that they're receiving the care in which they um, have designed a specific budget is, is determined based on the needs of the veteran, and the veteran may then choose to hire their own workers um, and services that they need to be able to remain independent. 
Um, is there a state home uh, in Alaska? Uh, that's a really good question. I will have to look that up and get back with you because I don't oversee our, our facility based care programs and I'm not sure exactly where all of them are located. Uh, I do know that there are 133, 134 um, uh, state uh, veteran home programs across the country. Um, but I can I can answer that question uh, once I check with uh, with our state home program uh, personnel. So let's go on to the next slide. So our office has a, a large variety of programs, as I mentioned, all of them um, have specific uh, a specific site on our, our geriatrics um, website, which is www.va.gov backslash geriatrics. And on this website, every single one of the programs I mentioned, including some that uh, I may have just kind of skimmed over, are, are, are detailed on this site where you can find more information. We also have a variety of information just on long term care planning, healthcare resources, and, and making decisions. Anyone can access this website. It is a public facing website. And there are tools on this website that may be helpful even if you're not a veteran. We'll go to the next slide, please. So we have decision aids on our our, our website um, talking about your patient priorities of care. One of the things that our office is very interested in is what matters most to veterans. And so that question is frequently asked of our veterans for them to, to make decisions about what it is in their care that matters the most to them, what things are barriers to receiving that care or things in your own personal life that may be um, troubling you that we could help solve. So we always want to know what, what matters most. Um, we also help veterans plan their health priorities. So whether that is, you know, to remain independent or is it to treat your disease, we're always there to assist in anything that we do. And we have decision aids on our website that help um, help anyone, as I mentioned, they're not just for veterans, but help anyone have those discussions with their provider so that we can make the care plan most meaningful to the veteran. Next slide, please. All right, so in conclusion, um, I just gave a very brief overview of the many programs and initiatives that the VA has underway to support veterans as they age. Uh, we also have several um, innovative pilots that are going on um, that uh, hopefully will be successful and we can can roll out. A couple of them include one, uh, uh, us proactively identifying veterans who may be in need of services and offering those services prior to them actually uh, talking to their, their provider about them. Uh, another one is looking at our veterans who are currently in nursing homes and uh, seeing if they are able to live independently if we were to provide more support in their home. That nursing home to home pilot has been successful in moving over 300 veterans out of nursing homes and back into their homes over the last year. We are also doing a pilot um, uh, of VA provided home health aides. Um, for those veterans that are um, already enrolled with our home based primary care uh, to see if um, we can help uh, allay some of the uh, staffing difficulties that many of the community agencies are having currently and being able to provide this level of care. So that's just three of the ones that our office is overseeing. Um, VA really is a leader in home and community based services and provide, as I mentioned, all types of supports that may not generally be available through other healthcare sources, such as Medicare or Medicaid. We do partner with um, our Medicare and Medicaid partners to um, uh, provide services that are complementary, um, and we also ensure um, 
that we are not duplicating any services that are currently being provided by another source. So, um, again, my name is Dana Cooper. My contact information is there if you'd like to learn more about these programs, or if you have any additional questions. Um, and, and I know that was kind of a little bit short, but I'm happy to take any questions that may be um, out there. Thank you, Ms. Cooper, um, for your presentation and sharing of information. Uh, we appreciate that. We do have a few questions in the Q&A box, and we will start to address these. I will read the person's name out loud and the question out loud, and we will ask you to provide a response to the folks that are online and the folks that have called in. Uh, if we don't get around to all of your questions today, if more questions start coming in, we do have your email address and we will reach out to you directly to provide our answer. Uh, on the screen, you can see Ms. Cooper's point of contact information where you can also reach out to her and we'll have our point of contact for our team as well later. The first question, Ms. Cooper, comes from Lillian B. And she asks, can you describe veteran directive care, please? Um, yes, um, so I did uh, describe this one a little bit. Um, veteran directed care is a program for um, all enrolled veterans who, me who meet the criteria, meaning they need to have ADL deficits or deficits in caring for, for their own personal care. And VA provides a budget based on the level of care need uh, that the veteran is then able to uh, to use to purchase goods and services uh, that is most needed in their own uh, time in their for their own care. Um, we do work with the community um, uh, area agencies on aging to assist with this program. So it is a partnership with a community agency, and um, uh, and then veterans are able to, to kind of direct the care that they need. And the, you, when you say um, local or community care, you mean county agencies? Yes, the county agencies on uh, aging. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, our next question comes from Daryl Brown. And he has a specific question. Is there a state veterans home in Alaska? Yes, and I will have to look that up. I don't have the list in front of me. And since that's not my area that I work, I will have to confirm whether there is. Um, and I have uh, sent a message out to my partner. So um, hopefully she will answer me. And it, uh, if not, I will get the answer back uh, as soon as I do. Okay, Mr. Brown, we'll get that answer back to you as soon as we can. Our next question comes from Ms. Jennifer. Given that 20% of veterans live in rural areas, and given their projection reference earlier, how is it, how is the VA planning to address the needs of these veterans? That's a really good question, and I and one I I, I thank you for asking. So Part of our initiative is to expand our home and community based services, particularly our home based primary care uh, and our medical foster homes, as well as the uh, personal care services and that this large expansion. Um, is particularly geared towards reaching those in rural areas. So we're providing VA programs um, to allow for better access of primary care through our home based primary care teams. And we are expanding into many of the rural areas that we don't currently cover. Um, we have a ways to go. I'll be the first to admit that, but we are coming closer to being able to get partner or our veterans the care they need in the community in which they live. Thank you very much for that question, Ms. Jennifer, and thank you for that answer, Ms. Cooper. Our uh, next question comes from Jason Abshire. Can you describe the pilot program you mentioned for HHA? Sure. So we have three of our facilities um, that are currently working um, to hire uh, home health aides. Um, into their home based primary care programs and provide those services with VA staff. Uh, this will um, allow us to meet the need in some of the areas that are having 
difficulty with agencies having enough staff to be able to meet the demand. So we are, are piloting that right now. Um, it's a feasibility study, meaning we need to see if it makes sense for VA to do this. Um, whether we have any any better success at hiring uh, that level of staff over uh, the community agencies is is there to be determined. But we um, so far are doing pretty good in those uh, three sites that are are doing them, and uh, and we'll uh, more to come. But um, the goal is to be able to meet the demand um, and need of the veterans in the community uh, that we're serving. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Cooper. We have uh, one more question coming in now. Uh, Mr. Morales is typing it in for me again. Please see Ms. Cooper's point of contact information on the screen if you have additional questions for her. Next question is coming from Robert uh, Kazor. Any plans to increase care to veterans needing to stay permanently? Currently, only short term and physical therapy are provided after surgery. Um, I, I, I'm not sure I under, understand um, uh, the question. Most of our program uh, programs, particularly the home and community care programs, don't have a timeline. Um, there is a short term, as you mentioned, short term physical therapy uh, that is looked at remediation. So once a veteran reaches their their maximum benefit from that, um, our our um, services would stop. Um, but can a veteran can always be re referred back if that need um, uh, is needed at another time. Um, they. The skilled care services that we do provide through our community agencies um, follow the Medicare rules, which are uh, short term therapies. Uh, but um, again, if, if a veteran requires that care after. Um, uh, you know, a, additional, you mentioned uh, right after surgery, so if they need to have care. You know, longer than that, then we can extend that authorization for as long as the veteran needs it. Thank you, um, Mr. Uh, Kazor from Shakna, Virginia for that question. Our sixth question comes from John. I thought there was a 90 day limit to learn long term care. Has that been extended to cover veterans till end of life? For certain veterans, yes. So for our highly uh, highly service connected veterans, those that are 70% service connected and above, uh, the VA is statutorily responsible for providing for their long term care. Uh, short term um, uh, nursing home care or, or, or skilled care placement um, can be done on an as needed basis. Um, uh, again, we do follow the Medicare uh, rules for that, which typically are 90 days or less. Um, uh, but for veterans who are highly service connected in need of long term care placement, uh, VA does cover that. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Cooper. Our uh, seventh question is coming from Ms. Linda Davis. Given that you serve veterans of all ages, would you provide home based behavior health services for a veteran with multiple diagnoses while she seeks approval for long term inpatient residential treatment at a CCN approved facility? Uh, so that would have to be done by behavioral health. Uh, our mental health partners, I, I'm not sure of what their programs are for. Uh, in home treatment, I do know that they have uh, some in home treatments for um, those veterans with high uh, mental health needs. Um, our services in geriatrics and extended care are on the chronic uh, medical conditions. Although we do have a mental health provider on our home based primary care team for specific services while they're awaiting placement uh, for a behavioral need. Um, I would have to defer that to our uh, mental health partners um, to, to be able to answer that. 
Thank you very much. Our eighth question is coming from Sewell Hong. Do any of our your programs make use of volunteers? If so, what are some typical roles they serve? So our program uh, programs in GEC do not uh, specifically work with volunteers, although we have uh, worked very closely with um, the office um, formerly known as voluntary service. Um, we, we work very closely with them uh, on a program that they call the Compassionate Care Corps. Um, that is a, a, a volunteer-led program that reaches out to veterans who are experiencing uh, loneliness or uh, social isolation. And um, it has been extremely successful to many of our veterans that are in our geriatrics and extended care programs who are typically homebound and unable to get out of their house. Uh, that program provides for um, telephone uh, visitation um, and check-ins uh, with, with their uh, designated veteran. And uh, it, is, it has received um, quite a bit of success. Um, and we're very happy to partner with them. Thank you, Ms. Hong, for that question. Our next question is coming from Kathy Wilson. My parents are 87 and 88. My father is the veteran and my mother is in a nursing home. My mom did all the cleaning and preparation of food for 66 years. My father cannot cook. He is not ill. Can he have a food service delivery about it to him to provide food through the VA? Ah, uh, well, indirectly, yes and no. Um, we do not have a food delivery service, although I have seen uh, a lot of discussion uh, within the VA about different uh, services and addressing food insecurity. Uh, I can relate to this. My parents are also uh, in their late 80s, um, and uh, we often worry if something were to happen to my mother, what would happen to my dad? Um, but um, indirectly, so we don't provide a direct food delivery services, but um, our homemaker home health aides are able to prepare food for veterans and prepare meals for, you know, either a week at a time or a couple of days at a time, or even just every day. So, depending on the need um, and, and their own abilities, then uh, yes, they could receive um, uh, a home health aid to help provide in home cooking. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Cooper. I don't see any more questions. Again, if you need to reach out to Ms. Cooper, please see her point of contact information on the screen. You can also reach out to our team for any additional information um, that we can see it on the screen now, the information uh, our team members and Mr. Washington's uh, point of contact at this time, I'm going to turn the mic back over to Mr. Washington, who will provide some closing remarks. Hey, thank you, True. Dana, we appreciate your great information, and we can tell it was great information because of all of the questions that you received. So, again, uh, thank you for taking time. And uh, to all of you who joined us, we appreciate you joining. Take care of yourselves and be blessed. Um, just one, one last thing um, before we go, I did get a follow up, and there is a State home in Palmer, Alaska. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yes. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm sure Mr. Brown, who asked that question, was thankful too. So, Palmer, Alaska, Mr. Brown, thank you all so much for joining us today. If you registered for this event or this webinar, we would provide you with today's presentation. The pre pre presentation will be provided on our website. At a later date, please subscribe to our website and Facebook for future webinars and information. This adjourns today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining us today and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ms. Cooper.